Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Back today is my favorite friend and <laughs> ATP correspondent direct from London, England, the fabulous, beautiful, and brilliant Katie Hopkins. Hello, Katie. Hello, Barry, and thank you for that very kind introduction. It's good to see you again and good to be back with our ATP family here online. Let's talk about the, well, the gross news out of DC. Apparently the National Guard, which has been sent from governors across the country at the request of uh, our federal uh, executives is gonna deploy and stay there for at least another month to protect Washington DC from, well, I'm not exactly sure what. Um, the expense is dramatic. The troops were treated horribly. They were sleeping on the floor. Uh, they didn't have restroom facilities. They were being grossly disrespected. Um, and then Governor Pritzker out of Illinois talks about the dark forces of racism and white supremacy and so on. Uh, what's your take on that? You know, your heart kind of goes out to the National Guard guys. Having stayed with or having had them stay in the same hotel as I was in back in January, this was January 6th, they were already questioning what they were doing there. This is now going to be, they're going to be there till March. And when you start hearing that the explanation for why they're there is misinformation or the dark forces of racism, how on earth is that quantifiable? And how on earth can they know when they're going home? <laughs> I, I, I'm stupefied. You know, to top it off, when Nancy Pelosi, who's the Speaker of the House, who's third in line to be President of the United States, God forbid, is asked about it, she talks about the fact that the enemy that they're protecting against is, quote, within the House of Representatives. Oh my God, what does that mean? And if it means what I think it means, Maybe the fence ought to go right down the center aisle between the Democrat side and the Republican side. So Republicans don't jump the Democrats and start killing them wholesale. What, what is she talking about? Right. And that woman loves a fence, as you know, because she has one all the way around her home in order that she's protected. Because we all know it's always one rule for thee and not for me. And, and you definitely get that sense, Barry, don't you, that at the moment the Democrats believe the Republicans, all of them, apart from maybe, you know, the 11 that have crossed over to vote with Democrats on various issues, that they are the enemy. You know, what happened to the talk of unity? What happened to collaborative government? What happened to working together to achieve something that helped the American people? Well, it's going to get worse with what I'm about to ask you. The, the former police chief of the U.S. Capitol quit after the disaster on January mm -hmm. uh, whenever it was, the sixth, and the new acting chief now wants permanent fencing and enhanced security to keep people away from the Capitol. You know, the people's house, except this new chief, Chief Pittman, does not want anybody going to the Capitol. Boy, have things changed in our free, democratically elected Capitol. That's so right, Barry. And, you know, I'm the foreigner here, as we know. Um, but one of the things that always struck me when you get to D.C. is what a splendid capital it is and how open that place is, was. You know, the mall, the monuments, the capital. You felt like you were allowed to be part of it. And and from a Brit's perspective, we we don't have that much access. It felt like we were trusted to be part of it, even as a foreigner. And to think that that's gonna be taken away over something that doesn't seem to be quite as it seemed in terms of what happened on the 6th, that feels like a national tragedy, if not an international one. Yeah, I, I'm extremely sad about it. And some of the things coming out of Washington, like that statement that the enemy is within the building, within the House of Representatives is, scandalous. You're not allowed to disrespect your fellow members of Congress. There are ethics rules about it. She could literally be sanctioned for saying it, but the Dems control the House, so there will be no sanctions. 
So check this out. The other day, there was a vote on spending our money, taxpayer money, on illegal aliens instead of US citizens as part of this bailout. In other words, let me take your money, Mr. American taxpayer, and give it to illegals that have broken into the country. And we're gonna do that instead of taking care of our people that, well, you know, living on the street, have no food, no lodging, uh, no medical care. Many of them are veterans. They need mental health uh, counseling, et cetera, et cetera. And 42 Senate Dems out of the 50 voted for this outrageous proposal that thank goodness didn't pass. That's right. And it makes you wonder, doesn't it, how long that's going to hold? You know, how long is it before the 42 that were in favour of handing out your money to illegals become 125, become 220, and then are the majority? And I think one of the things that always smacks me is when they use the phrase government checks. You know, I don't think you should be allowed to use that language because they aren't government checks. The government doesn't have money. It has your money. It's your money they're going to hand out to illegals. And just as with the ferry boats that we have bringing migrants across the meds, what does that do for others? It incentivizes them to come. Oh boy, it sure does. You give somebody a warm place to sleep, a warm meal on the table and a nice stipend every month, they'll travel all over the world. Why? Absolutely. Because their government doesn't do anything that stupid. So mm -hmm. they're going to come to where your government does things. Mm -hmm. well, and, and we've seen it here, Barry. You know, the migrants don't just, you know, take that money and go and do something with it. They are showing their friends. You know, it's one of the videos we see all the time is them going, look, I got this hotel room. Look, I got this free money. Look, I got this health care. They, they advertise your country in the worst possible way. Well, my country is in the middle of violence, the likes of which it has not seen in peacetime. Um, Chicago is breaking records on riots and murder, as are almost every major US city. And yet, and yet, we're all locked down. And they're calling for more gun control, for example, in Chicago, which has the strongest gun control laws in the United States. They advertise when you drive around Chicago, gun-free zone, entering gun-free area. This school is gun-free. You know, at some point, whoever orders those signs is gonna grow a brain and realize people carrying guns don't throw them away or lock them up on the way to commit a crime because the sign says no guns allowed. Governors seem to always want to have an excuse. They don't take accountability for these figures, just like our mayor in London never takes accountability. And their excuse is, oh, it's lockdown. But when you actually analyze these statistics, in the first lockdown, crime dropped. But after the George Floyd riots and the pushback against uh, the police, you know, defund the police, that's when these numbers really went sky high. And they don't change the story because nobody calls them on it. No. So, you know, it used to be that people were killing each other in Chicago because the gun laws weren't strict enough. Well, they've got the strictest gun laws. So that after a while got stupid. And then it was because of Black Lives Matter uh, and no rights to protest. Well, they protested to the point of burning down the city. And every weekend, it seems they're breaking records on killing each other with weapons that are illegal in a place that doesn't even allow weapons. So you can't pass more gun control laws. They've already banned the guns and it's like a war zone there. Yeah, and I'm guessing, Barry, you probably know people moving out of New York or moving out of these cities. If I lived there, I wouldn't live there anymore because it's just horribly unsafe. That's my take. Thanks, Katie, for coming on today. And thank you out there in ATP land. I want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed to our text message alert system that gets you all of our content 
absolutely for free on your cell phone, please take out a blank text message, send the letters TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, address it to 88202 and push send. You'll get all of our stuff on the cell phone in your hand absolutely for free. You'll see lots of Katie and Barry and all of our other content. For ATP, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.